Good morning, fourth graders, and welcome to Math and Lesson 2-18. Today, at the end of this unit, we are practicing multiplying. So we are going to spend the first, the first class activity page is just practicing the multiplication using any of the methods that we've already learned. And the second class activity page is where we're going to work on completing some word problems using multiplication. So first up, Let's just think about what we've learned so far. Multiplication practice. What methods do we know? Let's look at 92 times 84 as an example. One of the methods we have learned has been the place value sections method. So if we were doing 92 times 84, we would draw the rectangles to fit this. So 92 we would split into 90 plus 2, 84 into 80 plus 4, and then we would fill the rectangles with the appropriate equation. So 80 plus 90, and we would solve 7,200. 4 plus 90 is 360. Then we come over here, 80 times 2 is 160. And then 4 times 2, we would multiply the ones, and that equals 8. Once we have our four partial products from these rectangles, we bring them over and we add them together to solve for 92 times 84. Our final answer is 7,728. This is a very quick review, as you can see. <laughs> so most of you are very familiar by now with the place value sections model. The other one we have learned about is expanded notation, which is very similar to the place value sections method, we are just writing it slightly differently. So we also have 92 times 84. And we, if you are still writing out the full expanded version, would write equals 90 plus 2 equals 80 plus 4. Now you may be so familiar with this method by now that you are actually holding some of it in your head and you know that 92 is 90 plus 2, so you're not writing the full equation out, you would just write 92 times 84. Because you know that we're going to multiply 80 times 90, 80 times 2, 4 times 90, and 4 times 2. And you know this just by looking at these numbers. You do not need to write these all out anymore. But I have written them here for you just to remind you of this method. Now again, just like place value sections method, we are going to use these same four equations and we are going to list them underneath the line. We are going to do 80 times 90, 80 times 2, 4 times 90, 4 times 2, and we write our partial products. If you are very familiar with expanded notation method, you may be holding these full equations in your head, and you may just be recording the partial products, 7,200, 160, 360, and 8. Either way, totally fine. And of course, you know we're going to add together and solve. Noting that these four equations are the same four that we came up with in the place value sections method. Okay, so that's the first two methods we have learned. We also have learned how to use the shortcut method to solve multiplication problems. So for this one, 92 times 84, we would begin with the ones and we would say 4 times 2 is 8. And we would carry on with our 4 and we would say 4 times 9 is 36. So this line here is going to record the ones, what we multiplied with the 4 that's in the ones place. Okay. And now we're going to multiply by the 8, which is in the tens place. So I'm going to put a zero here to remind me that I'm starting in the tens. So I'm filling the ones place with the zero. Now I'm going to do eight times two or 80 times two. Eight times two is 16. So I'll put down the six in the tens place because it's really um, six tens. And I'm going to put the one up here. Now eight times nine. Eight times nine is 72, but we are going to have to add this extra one that we have here. So 72 plus 1 is 73. So this row here is where we record what we multiplied when we multiplied by the number in the tens place. OK, 
Okay, so we've got the ones and the tens. And just like the other two methods, we are now going to add up our partial products to get our final solution. And for all three methods, we came to the same solution. Whichever method works best for you is the one that you can use today when you are doing your multiplication practice. Hopefully you are becoming more and more confident and holding more and more information in your head and perhaps needing to record less on your paper as you go because that's going to make you faster and more efficient. Okay. The next thing we are going to look at today is word problems. And on the second class activity page, you have four word problems and we are going to do the first one together, question 16. And the question is, the lines on a doubles tennis court are painted to be 78 feet long and 36 feet wide. The lines on a singles court are painted to be 78 feet long and 27 feet wide. What is the difference between the areas of a doubles tennis court and a singles tennis court? Hmm. Remember with a word problem, make sure we read it carefully, figure out what information do we know, and what is it we are being asked to find out? Well, we are being asked to find out what is the difference between the areas of a doubles tennis court and a singles tennis court. Whenever I see what is the difference, that tells me there's going to be subtraction in there somewhere. And we've been given some information about the doubles tennis court and a singles tennis court. And I can tell by looking at the numbers that a doubles tennis court is going to be bigger. So to figure out the difference, I think I'm going to have to work out like the doubles court minus the singles court is going to give me the difference. Now there's actually a couple of different ways we could solve this and I'm going to show you both ways. Both ways work. So let's go for it. The first way is to say, okay, I know I've been given information about a doubles court. I know it's 78 feet long and 36 feet wide. I'm going to figure out how many square feet there are in a doubles court. And for this one, I'm going to use expanded notation. So 78 times 36. And you can see I've expanded that out for 70 plus 8 for 78 and 30 plus 6 for 36. I actually can hold that in my head, but I've written it out here for you to see. Because we are going to do these equations. We are going to multiply the 6 times the 8, the 6 times the 70, the 30 times the 8, and the 30 times the 70. So let's give it a go. 30 times 70. It's 2,110. Because 3 times 7 is 21. And then I'm adding those zeros. Now 30 times 8. 3 times 8 is 24. And I'm adding the zero. 6 times 70. 6 times 7 is 42. And I'm adding the zero. So 420. 6 times 8 is 48. And you know what happens next? We've got all of those partial products. So we are going to add them together. To solve. And now we're going to get our singles court. We know the doubles court is 2,808 square feet. Let's figure out the singles court. Same model, I'm going to use expanded notation again. 78 times 27. We're doing exactly the same type of equation, the same model. I'm going to do 20 times 70, 20 times 8, 7 times 70, and 7 times 8. Then I'm going to add together my partial products to solve. And the singles court is 2,106 square feet. So I've got these two pieces of information. But I still need to figure out what is the difference between the areas. So I'm going to get the doubles court. And I'm going to subtract the singles court size. And I solve for 702 square feet. What is the difference between the areas of a doubles tennis court and a singles tennis court? 702 square feet. And I add the square feet because we are told that the unit of measurement is feet in the problem. And square feet because this is an area problem. So we are filling in all the, the unit blocks of feet in our um, 
on our tennis courts. Okay, so 702 square feet. I had to do a lot of working out there. I actually had to do three different equations there. I had to multiply the numbers for the doubles court, multiply the numbers for the singles court, and then subtract singles from doubles. We can do that, no problem. You could use the expanded notation method or the place value sections method or the shortcut method. And some of you are thinking, Mrs. Schofield, there's a faster way. And you know what? Let's have a look. Same problem. Some of you might have noticed that both the singles court and the doubles court, they're the same length. So if we have a tennis court, the doubles court was 78 feet long and 36 feet wide. Whereas the singles court is the same length, but it was just slightly smaller width, only 27 feet wide. So we've really got this difference of this area over here. Just it's a little, it's not as wide, the singles court. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the doubles court width and I'm going to subtract the singles court width. 36 minus 27 is 9. So I figured out that it's 9 feet difference, different here on the court. And it's 9 feet wide and it's still 78 feet long because both courts are 78 feet. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to figure out what 78 times 9 is and that is going to give me this section of the court that's the difference between the doubles court and the singles court. So let's do it. And let's use our shortcut method. So to use the shortcut method, we start with the ones. We've got 78 times 9, so we're multiplying by 9. 9 times 8. Well, I know that's 72. So I'm going to put the 2 in the 1's place, and I'm going to put those 7 10's up above in the 10's place. And now I'm going to take that 9 again, and I'm going to multiply it by the 7 10's and 78. So 9 times 7 is 63. But I've still got these other 7 10s. So I better add them on. 63 plus 7. Hmm. 70. 78 times 9 is 702. So what is the difference between the areas of a doubles tennis court and a singles tennis court? 702 square feet. We have exactly the same answer as we did when we tried it before, a different way. So you can see there's two different ways we could solve that problem. And that's the wonderful thing about word problems. You can approach them in different ways as long as you are careful about knowing what the question is asking you to solve and using the information you are given. Now you have three more questions on your class activity page. Remember what we've learned about word problems so far. Sometimes there could be extra information you don't even need. Sometimes there might be hidden information, something you have to figure out first before you can answer the question at the end. So think carefully, mathematicians. Be careful readers. Read the problem a few times if you need to to make sure you have all the information you need and think through what it is you're being asked to solve. I know you can do it. On our activity pages today, on the first page, I think just do the even numbers. You can check with your teacher on this one, but just doing the even numbers would be plenty. Um, and then on the second page, again, we've already solved question 16. So you have 17, 18, 19, and 20 to work through together in your classroom. There is also an exit ticket that goes along with it. Have fun.